Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Clean Sport webinar for International Ushu Federation Coaches. My name is Lisa, and I'm a member of the education team at the International Testing Agency, or the ITA for short. Hello, everyone, and my name is Armando Urvan. I'm also on the education team, and Lisa and I will be delivering the content of today's webinar. For those of you who don't know much about the ITA, in a few sentences, we are an independent organization that offers anti-doping services to international federations, including the IWUF, major event organizers, and other organizations. We've partnered with IWUF to deliver their anti-doping education program, and they've kindly invited you to this presentation for the coaching community. All right. So let's get started. Note that while this is a presentation for you, we also hope you will take the opportunities given to discuss your own answers to these questions. We'll ask you a few of these questions during the presentation, and we hope you can discuss with the neighbors next to you. There will also be a few practice exercises for you to even use your phones to check the prohibited list, but we'll get to that later on. We hope that today's content provides information for you to reflect and think on later. And we're always happy for you to reach out and ask any questions for follow-up on anything anti-doping related. So let's jump right in and kick off with a quote from research that looked at the power of the athlete entourage. Coaches and peers who have a close and trusting relationship with an athlete are most influential with respect to doping-related decisions. What this means is that all of you present today not only contribute to the prevention of doping, but you can also facilitate doping, even unintentionally, through the values you promote and the motivational climate you create. As a coach, athletes rely on you as a vital source of information and as a mentor. This requires everyone to understand the anti-doping rules and how you can positively influence an athlete's behaviors and values. With that introduction to the session, let's look what we will cover today. Your anti-doping roles and responsibilities, how to influence athlete values and behaviors, how to foster anti-doping attitudes, the anti-doping rules, how to support your athletes to check medications. What to do if an athlete needs a prohibited medication for health reasons. How to support your athlete to make informed decisions about supplement use. The testing process. How to report doping in sport. And recognizing vulnerability moments and the importance of your influence. All right. Let's start with the athlete support personnel. This is a group that includes coaches, and we will look at their roles and responsibilities under the anti-doping code, which is the core document that harmonizes anti-doping policies, rules, and regulations across all sport around the world. As an athlete support person, you must be knowledgeable and comply with the anti-doping policies and rules that apply to you and the athletes you support. You must also cooperate with the athlete testing program, and importantly, you must use your influence on athlete values and behaviors to, in to foster anti-doping attitudes. You must also disclose to IWUF and your national anti-doping organization if you have committed an anti-doping rule violation in the last 10 years. As well, you must cooperate with any anti-doping organization investigating an anti-doping rule violation. You must not possess any prohibited substance or method without a valid justification. And you must not be offensive towards a doping control official or other person involved in the doping control. 
So this is what the code states, but let's ask you what this means practically, particularly around how you use your influence on athlete values and behaviors to foster anti-doping attitudes. I'd like you to take a moment to reflect on this question and share your thoughts with your neighbor. So please choose two responses that reflect your approach to clean sport. You can choose from be a role model, aim for fair play playing fair playing field, take no shortcuts, build a clean culture, accept the consequences, set the moral compass, report doping concerns, and share and instill knowledge. So take a couple seconds to share with your neighbor how you approach clean sport. Okay, now let's break down the key responsibilities of a coach. So you have a significant influence on all athletes you coach and interact with. So what do you need to do? First of all, be a positive role model. Do the right thing and lead by example. Essentially, you should be an ambassador for clean sport. As a coach, you play a crucial role in the development of people, not only from a sporting perspective, but also in supporting your athletes to set their moral compass. How you coach and your coaching philosophy has a direct impact on whether athletes choose to train and compete clean. The culture you build, of course, impacts the decisions an athlete makes. This relies on you knowing the anti-doping rules, those that apply to your athletes and those that apply to you to protect yourself and the athletes you work with. And of additional importance is reminding everyone of the principle of strict liability, which Lisa will now explain in further detail. Thanks, Armando. So strict liability means that the athlete is solely responsible for everything they use and that is found in their body, regardless of whether there was an intention to cheat or not, or if the athlete was at fault. This is one reason why it is so important for athletes to know and understand their anti-doping responsibilities and how to protect themselves from inadvertent doping. You as a coach have a key role in promoting engagement with education and supporting them to fulfill their responsibilities. In terms of fostering anti-doping attitudes, you need to develop and reinforce clean sport values in the athletes you coach and other support personnel in your environment. It's important to prioritize a coaching environment that nurtures a culture of personal excellence rather than a win at all costs mentality. This can be achieved by promoting informed choices and through directing your athletes to resources for additional support. Now let's look at what you should know in order to do this. First of all, you must know what the anti-doping rules are as you and your athletes should be knowledgeable of and comply with them. So with the mention of ADRBs, let's keep in mind that doping is defined in the World Anti-Doping Code as the occurrence of one or more anti-doping rules violation. I'd like to ask you a question now. It's more like a tricky question. And if you don't need to the answer, it's perfectly all right. Do you know how many anti-doping rule violations there are? The options you have to choose from are 3, 5, 11, or 13. And please here share your answer with your neighbor. All right, and the right answer, which some of you may already know, 
is 11. Now Lisa will walk us through this in more detail. So as you can see on the screen, there are 11 anti-doping rule violations. The first four, rules 2.1 to 2.4, apply only to athletes. These are the presence of a prohibited substance, use or attempted use of a prohibited substance, evading, refusing, or failing to submit to sample collection, and whereabouts failures by an athlete in a registered testing pool. Rules 2.5 to 2.11 apply to athletes and athlete support personnel. These can be seen on the screen. These include tampering, possession, trafficking, administration, complicity, prohibited association, and discouraging or retaliating against someone who reports doping in sport. I would like to highlight that the consequences for an athlete or an athlete support person being sanctioned with an anti-doping rule violation are significant. At a starting point, this could include a ban from all sport in any capacity, but there are also associated mental, financial, and social effects that go all along with this. For coaches, an ADRV can be career ending. To avoid these consequences for yourself or an athlete you work with, we will now look at, watch a video courtesy of Drug Free Sport New Zealand that explains the 11 ADRVs so you understand what they mean for you and the athletes you work with. Drug Free Sport NZ presents the anti-doping rule violations starring these guys. Oh, oh no, careful, he's got it. Oh, he's dropped it. Also starring this guy. All right, let's begin. There can be no presence of a prohibited substance or its metabolites or markers in an athlete's sample. You cannot use or attempt to use a prohibited substance or method. You cannot evade doping control, hide from them or refuse to provide a sample. Registered testing pool athletes, you need to be where you say you will be so the testers can find you. Athletes or any other person cannot tamper with any part of the doping control process. You can't have a prohibited substance or method in your possession. You can't sell or provide a prohibited substance or method to other people. You can't administer or attempt to administer a prohibited substance or method. You can't hide, help, or attempt to cover up a doping violation. You can't knowingly associate in a sporting capacity with someone who has been banned from sport due to an anti-doping rule violation. You cannot discourage or retaliate against somebody for reporting suspicious behavior. So there you go. Don't play with your health or reputation. Play the game. Oh, yeah, he's caught it this time. Oh, oh no, he's dropped it again. Nice smile, though. We hope you enjoyed the video. It's a great summary of what Lisa just explained. We will now get practical and explore some scenarios in which you can support your athlete. And we will start by looking at medications. In the first one, an athlete you work with is suffering from allergies. They go into the pharmacy and pick up a medication. Let's take a moment to discuss with your neighbor if you think there could be an anti-doping issue in this scenario. The options are yes, no, or I'm not sure. So the answer is yes. There could be an anti-doping issue in this scenario, and I'll pass it back to Lisa to explain why now. An important document for athletes and coaches to know 
is the prohibited list. This list is updated every year at least once on the 1st of January, and it tells us what substances and methods are prohibited in sport and when. The substances and methods can be prohibited at all times, prohibited in competition, or prohibited only in particular sports. Importantly, substances included on the prohibited list can be found in some medications, both prescription and over-the-counter, in supplements and, re and recreational drugs. So athletes must check every medication prior to using them, including what can be common medication purchased in a pharmacy unrelated to sport. As you remember, anti-doping is based on the principle of strict liability, which means not know knowing that something is prohibited is not an excuse, and they will face an anti-doping rule violation if they do test positive. Let's take a moment to have you again talk with your neighbor about where you or an athlete can go to get support to check a medication. Take a moment to discuss how you think someone can check a medication. And as a hint, you can talk about more than one answer. Your options are, check with your national anti-doping organization, check with the team doctor, or check using an online resource such as the Global DRO. Take a couple seconds to discuss your options with your neighbor. Okay, let's go to the next slide to look a little more closely at your options. So you can use any of these resources to check a medication, if, to check if a medication is safe for an athlete to use. To support your athlete, it is important you know that no one is expecting you to memorize the prohibited list, but it is important that you know it exists and that you know where you and your athlete can go to get support with tasks such as checking medications. And in relation to medications, it's important to know that an athlete has an anti-doping right to have their health protected. This means that if an athlete has an illness or a medical condition that requires a medication that's on the prohibited list, they can apply for a therapeutic use exemption, also known as a TUE. An approved TUE gives the athlete permission to use a substance or method on the prohibited list without the risk of sanction. We will now talk about other substances athletes might use, and here I'm referring to supplements. We will start with another scenario. So let's go. An athlete you work with is in the final month of preparation for the biggest competition of the year. The athlete tells you that between training and their other responsibilities, they often get food in a hurry and don't always make the best choices. They say they are often tired and they feel this is affecting their competition preparation. They tell you that they have uh, seen supplements in the supermarket promoted as optimal for a healthy diet and sustainably improved performance. Your athlete asks what uh, you think. What will you say here? And take a moment to think about which option here you will say. And the options are, sounds great. Let's talk to an expert first or don't take it. Of course, if uh, you would uh, like to say something different or want to expand on your response, please feel free to share it with another participant. So probably the ideal answer here is let's talk to an expert to look at the bigger picture of nutrition. This could be a doctor or a sports nutritionist to see if there are any underlying causes of tiredness or to support your athlete with meal planning. What you shouldn't do is say, sounds great. And I will explain why now. 
Supplements are a risk for athletes because the supplement industry is not well regulated. This means supplements can be contaminated during the manufacturing process or in the supply chain of ingredients. Mislabel with the contents not matching what it's labeled. Contamination and mislabeling can lead to inadvertent ingestion of prohibited substances. They can be a risk to your health. Testing of uh, some supplements have shown they contain heavy metals and pesticides. It's important for you to be aware that no supplement is 100% risk-free for an athlete. So there must be an expert informed reason for an athlete to use them. Thank you, Armando, for walking us through that. Okay, now you what you can see on your screen is a supplement called Koala Freak. This is sold as what we call a pre-workout. And here we have blown up the ingredients label and we're wondering, can you identify or guess the prohibited substance? The options you have to choose from are arginine, AKG, folic acid, hygienamine, or thiamine. Take a couple seconds to discuss with your neighbor what you think the prohibited substance may be. All right, and the answer is hygienamine. If an athlete tests positive for this, they will be sanctioned with an anti-doping rule violation. But also, the amount of caffeine in one scoop of this product is the equivalent of 4.8 Starbucks single shot espressos or 10 and a half eight ounce cans of Coca-Cola, which probably is not going to be good for anyone who uses this uh, product. This will not be good for their health. Now let's look at another supplement. This one is a protein powder. Can anyone look at the label and tell yourself or a neighbor what may be a cause for concern? Okay, so this one is a bit of a tricky question, but it serves as an important lesson because there's nothing on this label which is prohibited in sport, but Testing on this product revealed the presence of andarine and ostarine. Both of these substances are prohibited in sport. So whether this product was contaminated or mislabeled, who really knows? But what we do know is that if an athlete used this product and were tested, it would have come back positive and they would have been sanctioned with an ADRV. Some key tips for you and your athletes on supplements are here. First, get expert advice on individual needs. Next, maximize health through diet and sleep. Third, ensure any supplement you are considering has reliable evidence of benefits to health and or performance. And just as a reminder, Social media is not somewhere you will find reliable evidence. And most importantly, athletes should only use supplements that have been batch tested by an independent supplement certification company for substances prohibited in sport. And here on your screen, you can see some of the said independent certification companies. And with that, I'll pass it back to Armando to walk us through our next topic. Testing. Thanks, Lisa. As you all may remember, supporting the athlete testing program is one of your responsibilities as a coach. We will play a video courtesy of the Japan Anti Doping Agency so you can familiarize yourself with the testing process. So let's play this video now.
So welcome back. What can you do as a coach to support an athlete when uh, around testing? You have a key role in developing the narrative around testing. Make sure this is positive. For example, recognition of success and hard work. You may act as the athlete representative during doping control. So you should observe the process is being followed correctly and support your athlete with tasks such as checking the sample codes. If you act as an athlete representative, you should also sign the doping control form in addition to the athlete to indicate you are satisfied and it is accurate. So protecting your athletes is not only about what you can do for them directly, but also how you can be a proactive part of clean sport. And this is where reporting comes in. One of the first questions we get about reporting is, what can I report? Well, anyone within the sport community can report anything they see, hear, know, or suspect. It can be something from the past, something happening now, or something someone intends to do in the future. It can be about athletes, coaches, team doctors, physios, administrators, or parents of athletes. Importantly, all information you provide about doping or potential doping in sport, it's important, no matter how big or how small. So, how can you report? Reveal is the ITA secure reporting platform. Any information you provide is confidential and can be anonymous. The information you provide is processed with the highest levels of integrity and rigor. Importantly, the protection of the identity of anyone who proactively reports information is at the heart of the ITA's intelligence and investigations work. To report in any language, you have a few options. You can use our web-based reporting platform, send an anonymous email, or actually send us an anonymous WhatsApp. We have included the QR codes on the screen. As a reminder, you will receive this slide shortly after the webinar. In simple terms, by reporting, you are protecting yourself, your athletes, and your sport. Reporting makes a positive difference. All right, and then moving on to our final topic today, I'd like to bring it all together and look at athlete vulnerability moments. The ability for a coach to recognize when your athlete might be most at risk and vulnerable is really important. The image on the screen shows hello, a few challenges. Sorry, eh? sorry. Uh, I don't see your camera on. Hey, eh? you can't see me. Nope. Uh, okay, now I can see you. Sorry. Oh, I just yeah, turned all it. good. Are we good to all, go again? Yeah, all good. If you so, can go through 43? slide 42, please. 42 is you, right? Oh, uh, yeah, 43. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. 43. 43. Yep. Okay, uh, I'm muting myself now. Bye. Okay. Okay, and thanks Armando. And for our final topic today, I'd like to bring it all together and look at athlete and vulnerability moments. The ability for a coach to recognize when your athlete might be most at risk and vulnerable is really important. The image on the screen shows a few challenges an athlete may experience along their journey, which can make them vulnerable to doping. These can be experienced by athletes at all levels and in all sports, and they can range from peer pressure, from parents or sporting peers, resulting in a win at all cost attitude. An athlete may be transitioning from a national to an international environment and not immediately experience sporting success. And when an athlete gets injured, there may be pressure to return to sport quickly, particularly if there are things like selection or funding on the line. We all need to be able to recognize these and support your athlete. This could be by advocating for education, seeking out specialists in sport services, such as nutritionists, doctors, and psychologists. And importantly, you must ensure you see them as a person first and an athlete second. This support from a coach 
is critical. And as the person who knows their athlete best, you as the coach best know how to provide the support so your athlete can make well-informed decisions. Now, let's jump to a story about Johnny. Johnny is the national record holder for 800 meters. He's competed in Olympics and World Championships, but has always finished outside of the medals. Now, while he's never won a medal, he's still one of the best athletes in the world and has worked hard for the past 10 years to achieve this. In this time, Johnny has realized that he often competes against other athletes who use drugs to improve their performance. He knows this because other athletes have approached him and admitted they take them and that he should too. Johnny believes that it is important he achieves success in sport without using drugs. But after the final of the World Championships, in which three of his competitors beat him took drugs, he is upset and annoyed at being cheated out of a medal. Johnny is considering taking drugs and has told his coach that if other athletes are doing it, he's going to do it too. Imagine if you were Johnny's coach. What do you think you would say to him in this situation? Take a moment to share that with your neighbor. Okay, let's bring it back. And so actually this video is based on a true story. So allow me to share the ending. Well, Johnny chose not to dope, and a key factor in this decision was his coach who said to him, Johnny, you're one of the best athletes in the world. Athletes have to take drugs to keep up with you. And though the converse, through this conversation with his coach, Johnny realized that if he did take drugs and was caught, all of his achievements would be tainted. And in the end, Johnny won the bronze medal at the next edition of the Olympic Games. Now, this is just one example of the positive impact a coach can have on an athlete's doping-related decision-making. These types of conversations are so personal, and you, who knows each of your athletes best, will know the best way to navigate these conversations. So, thank you all for being here today. Armando will now take us through some key points. Thank you, Lisa. So, as a summary, as a coach, you are a key part of clean sport. You should demonstrate always clean sport behaviors and support your athletes to be and stay clean. You should advocate for your athletes' anti-doping rights, and you should assist your athletes in fulfilling their anti-doping responsibilities. Remember, you're also bound by the anti-doping rules. And finally, please be an active part of clean sport. So, what's available after this presentation for you and your athletes? The IWF invests in education activities for its communities, as we see here. There are multiple webinars and event-based education activities that took place in 2023 and will happen also in 2024. And here is all the information on the website. On this slide, we can see some further education resources available for you to continue your clean sport education. These include the ITA multi webinars, the ITA after help, the WADA Adept platform, on which we recommend the course for high performance coaches. And of course, you can always contact your NADO to find out what programs they have available for you. Over to you, Alyssa. All right, now wrapping up now, I wanna leave you with these useful links. These are the main places I would point you to if you want more information on some topics that we've covered today. And as a final message, today we have a, a message from Anita Hartung, a former professional athlete and current coach and manager. She's gonna share three tips to keep in mind as coaches when it comes to promoting a clean sport environment for athletes. I strongly believe that athlete support personnel play a crucial and highly influential role when it comes to athlete's life 
at every stage of the athlete pathway. So my tips for coaches and managers would be first, be a role model and lead by example. This way you, you need to educate yourself uh, on the topics of clean sport. Second one, emphasize long-term development. This way, no shortcuts are allowed. And the third one, encourage open communication with your athletes. This way, they can always come to you and turn to you when they have any anti-doping related concerns. Okay, and that brings us to the end of today's presentation. We really appreciate your attention. And of course, if you have any questions later on, you can always email us at education at ita.sport. Please also feel free to subscribe to our newsletter to receive the, all the information about ITA education initiatives. Thank you very much for your time and attention today.